we have a great panel who will help us work through some of those challenges and some of those solutions and um, understand how that different risk profile, innovation and people lands in the context of quite different but very uh, important business uh, and societal agendas. Erica, Prem and Lisa, we will um, go in that order. So starting with Erica, now the CEO of Cornerstone Capital, previously the Managing Director and Head of Global Sector Research at UBS Investment Bank. So Erica, you're all about data, analytics, value drivers, Pick it up from Greg. You talked about the extent um, to which data and massive amounts of information can become insight, right? 60,000 listed companies in the world, 1,000 of them represent something like 7.8% of all the jobs in the OECD. That same 1,000 companies represent something like 80% of the revenues in the entire OECD. That level of economic concentration is unprecedented, along with big data, along with social media. I'll tell you a few other things that are unprecedented. The state in which we sit with regard to the most massive intergenerational transfer of wealth the world has ever known, tens of trillions of dollars will transfer hands in the investment world to a class of investors, a younger demographic, a more conscious demographic, a group of serious, pragmatic investors that absolutely demand competitive investment returns while at the same time look for societal impact, impact investors, investors who know, like I do, that over the long run, there is no dichotomy between a long-term corporate profitability and an impact on societal need. The fact that we are getting to a place where there is beginning to be enough data, quality data, assured data, regarding environmental, social, and governance performance at the corporate level. Okay, we're starting to get the data, the good data, the valuable data. We're starting to get some standards, standards by which we can measure things, we can benchmark things, we can start to see, is there momentum, is there improvement? Are we becoming a better generation of leaders that understand how to be transparent, and how to facilitate collaboration. Because we talked about complexity. Greg talks about complexity, unprecedented. And I will tell you that the massive global challenges, whether it's about healthcare, whether it's about education, income inequality, climate volatility, whatever these massive challenges are, the reality is that complex problems cannot be solved sequentially. They need to be solved with multiple parallel initiatives all right, that together come up with the best solution, the most innovative solution. And to see a, a CGMA, you know, process and, and competency that's allowing for a more forward-thinking private sector that because of this economic concentration is absolutely critical it is a privilege. So thank you for inviting me. Erica Karp. So Prem, Prem um, Paramas Warren, uh, you are the um, Global Head of Media and Telecommunications at Jefferies. So fascinating to hear your take on this, what overlaps, what sure. will be different from that perspective. Sure. Um, the most important thing, just as it was back when, and people lost sight of things in, at certain times, but it's, it's people, we've talked about it, integrity, and then obviously opportunity. When a company, for example, will go public, they start asking a lot of questions about, you know, how do I have to think about the capital markets? How do I have to think about investors? You know, what's my multiple going to be? How am I going to be judged? Uh, what is the public perception, especially now with social media out there? Um, and, you know, the simple answer is, and we say this all the time, you need to run your company as a business exactly the way you want to run your company. The byproduct of that will be your stock price. And the byproduct of, of that will be the impact on your company and your people. You know, you still have to have hire the best people, you still have to have the highest integrity, and you still have to look at opportunity. And I think those are the things that, that we try to preach. And um, I certainly still believe in those, you know, and uh, I think it's important to, to do that. And, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll leave you with, with kind of how 
you know, some of these changes happen, and you can, you can set that question up, but, you know, you look at the telecom and tech bubble back in 2000, and, you know, why did that happen? You know, and, and we're actually, you know, then we go into a debt bubble in 2007, and we're actually in an interesting time right now. But that happened because you had a lot of people just believing the hype. And what I mean by that is it companies that had 10-year business plans, had 10-year models that had 25% CAGRs. They had a 25% CAGR on a 10-year business model has only been achieved by three companies in the world ever. <laughs> Interesting. Dell, Microsoft, and Intel. Now, can it be achieved? Yes. But you, had, you literally had hundreds of companies that had these plans. You had CapEx as a percent of revenue in these plans that were literally in single digits, low single digits, less than 5%. Maintenance CapEx for most average industrial companies, you know, somewhere between 10 and 14%. So you knew these plans were going to be busted, but no one wanted to believe it at the time. It was very interesting. Now there's a lot more scrutiny, right? And I think that's good. Having said that, I do think there's still uh, a fair amount of companies and CEOs who, and, and CFOs, quite frankly, that focus on managing to Wall Street or public perception rather than uh, focusing on their business itself. You know, with that, I, I think, again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish with it because I liked what Greg said. People, opportunity, integrity. Thanks, Prem. And thanks for putting integrity into the conversation and that sense of, and I think Greg expressed this really well, business leaders who have a strong sense of what their business is about, what is core to their business, what isn't core to their business, and how to build value for the long term as a result of that. Fascinating. And also lead, leads us to uh, Lisa, Lisa we uh, Westlake, Senior Vice President, Chief Human Resources Officer of Moody's in a role that has that analytics, has that innovation, and certainly has that people agenda at its heart. In terms of Moody's, if you think about it, that's what we do. We're, we're in the business of helping um, investors manage credit risk. And we do that in a variety of ways. Um, most people know us for our rating agency, um, provides two thirds of our revenues. And then we have a growing part of our business, which is uh, an analytics business. But in order, in order to be really good at risk assessment, we have to continually innovate. We've spent um, several years uh, re reinvigorating our employment brand, which I would say has really grown to become Moody's operating brand overall. So we built our, our employment brand from the bottom up, asking our employees what made it special to work at Moody's and why do they keep coming to work every day? And at the end of the day, our tagline is, our views matter, so will yours. And we thought that would be compelling to attract people to the company. But we use it also to continue to engage and challenge the people who work at Moody's day in and day out. And when I talk to um, new hires in particular, I say, this isn't just you know, a, a slogan. We really fully believe this and mean this. And so the fact that your views matter mean that you have an obligation to have a point of view and to voice it, whether it's in agreement or disagreement um, with what, what the, you know, the current conversation is. Because we need to get to the best opinions and the best decisions at the end of the day. And that's the only way we can do it, is if we drive it day in and day out with the people who work at the company. And so that helps us continue to be on our game and ahead of others in terms of thinking about risks and how to translate those into a common language that the global markets can understand. We're also focusing significantly on critical thinking. I, I find it fascinating. We have um, on, on the Moody's board, one of our board members is, um, is a, a professor at, um, at Stanford University. He, he, he um, specializes in structured finance markets and, and you know, all the quantitative um, analytics around that. And I've been asking, I was asking him um, one day, what are you seeing in the new students who are coming in? 
Um, you know, we've all, I think, are anxious to understand what the millennials are going to do to our organizations. You know, it, it's a population that's much larger, two or three times larger than the baby boomers. Um, and so we have a lot of, um, you know, the baby boomers trying to understand the millennials and the millennials trying to understand the baby boomers. What he said, the impact of social media, I thought was really fascinating. He said there's a lot of group think out there now because everybody can say something and it's really up to, um, up to those who are reading all this social media to come up with their own opinion. The challenge, or the, what he's, they see happening, however, is that everything is kind of going to the mean. And you know, people are tying that back to the impact of social media um, on, on our society. So it's truly something I think we, we need to focus on. And it is something that, that we at Moody's are, are trying to drive as well, because it informs our opinions.